Hello, welcome to the last topic in Chapter 3, Physical Properties and Acid Base Character. First, we will learn about the properties of alkali metals in Group 1 of the periodic table. The alkali metals are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. These metals all have one electron in their valence shell and can lose this valence electron to form an ion with a plus one charge. So, moving down the group, softness of alkali metals increases and reactivity with water also increases. We can predict that rubidium and cesium will be much softer and much more reactive. Francium is radioactive and is very rare in nature. There were also other observed trends moving down the group. Their density increases and their melting points and their boiling points will decrease. Next, we will learn about the alkaline earth metals in group 2 of the periodic table. The alkaline earth metals are beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium and radium located in group 2 of the periodic table. These metals all have two electrons in their valence shell and with the exception of beryllium can lose these valence electrons to form an ion with a plus two charge. They exhibit similar properties and reactivity trends to the alkali metals. Moving down the group, their density and reactivity increases, melting points and boiling points decrease and the metals become softer. Another group of elements is the halogens. The elements in group 17 of the periodic table. They are fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and astatine. Halogens in their elemental form are toxic, though their compounds have many real life applications. The halogens all have seven electrons in their valence shell and can accept one electron to form an ion with a minus one charge. Moving down the group, atomic radii increases by one electron shell. As a consequence, melting points and boiling points and their density also increase. The noble gases are the group 18 elements. Helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. These elements are notable for having a full valence shell of electrons. Helium has two valence electrons, whereas the other Nobel gases each have eight valence electrons. The Nobel gases all have full valence shells, which makes them very stable elements. In fact, they are so stable that in the past chemists thought that they could not react with other elements, which is why they were called the inert or unreactive gases. However, we know today that some noble gases can indeed react to form some compounds, which is why today this group of elements is called the noble gases instead. All of the noble gases are colorless and monoatomic, meaning that they exist as single atoms. Moving down the group, number of electron shells increases by one shell. Hence, the further down the group, the bigger the atom. The size of the atom also affects its boiling point. These boiling points increase because intermolecular forces between larger atoms with more electrons are greater than that between smaller atoms with fewer electrons. Also moving down, the density of the gases increases because larger atoms take up more space in a set volume. The metals that we meet most often in everyday life are found in the middle block of the periodic table. Iron, copper, tungsten, cobalt, nickel, platinum, to name but a few. This all belongs to a block known as the transition metals. These metals are unlike the ones we find in group 1 of the periodic table, such as sodium and potassium. Soft low melting and highly reactive metals. Most transition metals are similar to each other in that they have high melting points and a much lower chemical reactivity as well as producing compounds that are brightly colored. For example, 
if we compare potassium with six typical transition metals. Pause the video if you wish to study the table for longer. Notice how the transition metals are similar to one another but quite different to a typical group 1 metal. Their greater strength and hardness makes these metals an obvious choice for making things that will also resist reaction with both water and oxygen in the environment. This is the compound potassium chloride. This is copper chloride. The 2 just tells you that we are looking at the copper 2 plus ion. This is because copper, like all the other transition metals, can exist in more than one ionic form. Unlike group 1 metals, which can only be found as plus 1 ions like potassium in potassium chloride. As potassium chloride has no color and copper 2 chloride is a blue-green color, it is reasonable to assume that the color is caused by the presence of the copper 2 plus ion. Indeed, all simple compounds of transition metals are highly colored, unlike those of group 1, which are white. One additional property of transition elements, as already mentioned, as they can form ions with different charges. Copper, for example, can also make copper 1 chloride, where copper is a plus 1 ion and not plus 2. This has a slightly different color to copper 2 chloride. Manganese can form ions with a plus 2, plus 3, plus 4, plus 6, and plus 7 charge and all show a different color in its compounds. In summary, transition metals all have similar and very useful physical and chemical properties. Their atoms can form ions with a variable charge which also give them a range of colors in their compounds. Next, we are going to look at the acid-base character of the period 3 oxides and the transition from metallic to non-metallic character in the periodic table. Let's start with the acid base character of the period 3 oxides. We have the formula of the oxide on the top and the acid base character on the bottom. Sodium oxide and magnesium oxide are basic. Aluminium oxide is amphoteric which means it can act as both an acid and a base. And the remaining oxides are acidic. Next, we look at some equations for basic oxides and acidic oxides. Starting with the basic oxides, we have sodium oxide react with water to form sodium hydroxide which is a strong base and we have magnesium oxide react with water to form magnesium hydroxide. Acidic oxide, we have sulfur trioxide react with water to form sulfuric acid which is a strong acid and next we have phosphorus pentoxide react with water to form phosphoric acid which is a weak acid. And finally, we have nitrogen dioxide react with water to form nitric acid and nitrogen monoxide and nitric acid is a strong acid. Next, we look at the metallic and non-metallic character in the periodic table. The metallic character of an element can be defined as how easily an atom can lose electrons. Metals tend to lose their outer electrons to form positive ions and non-metals tend to gain electrons to form negative ions. Here, we have the trend in metallic character in the periodic table. From left to right across a period, we have decreasing metallic character. And in a group from top to bottom, we have increasing metallic character. So next, we will look at the reason for this trend. As we just saw, metallic character decreases as you move from left to right across a period in the periodic table and the reason for this is increasing nuclear charge and decreasing atomic radius across a period means the outer electrons are held more tightly. Metallic character increases down a group in the periodic table and the reason for this, outer electrons become easier to remove as the atomic radius increases down a group. That's all for chapter 3. I hope all the e-lecture series could help you to understand the periodic table. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.